Today I'm gonna talk about roosting bars and specifically staggered roosting bars and why I don't recommend them. My name is Bree Weisard. I run the blog, thefeatherbrain.com. I help people understand what their chickens want and wish that they knew. So I was inspired to do this video because of a message I got from one of my readers, Russ. Hello, Russ. And Russ sent me this email about his chickens all cramming onto the highest roosting bar in his coop. So he has six young chickens, uh, Orpingtons, Buff Orpingtons, and he says that he has a coop with three roosting bars and that all six of the hens cram onto the highest roosting bar, even though there's not space for them. So he says that when they come in at night, a couple of them are even standing up because they're just so squished up there on the roosting bar. And Russ says that he knows that they probably feel safest up there on the top roosting bar, but how could they possibly be getting a good night's sleep when some of them can't even really sit down and they're all just smushed up there? And Russ says he thought that these chickens would have worked out which roosting bars they should be standing on once they established a pecking order, but at about a month old, they're still just all cramming in up on that top board. All right, Russ, so you are correct that they are probably up on that top bar because they feel the safest up there. It could also be that they are just used to sleeping up there, and so now it's getting too tight, but because they've been doing that for so long when it wasn't that tight that um, they're just habituated to it. Chickens don't like change. They really don't like change. So um, if that's the case, it's kind of, as you said, as they get bigger or as they get more tired, they are likely to move to another roosting bar, kind of space themselves out a little bit better. And yeah, they're definitely not going to be getting as good a sleep if they're stuffed up there like that. And if some of them are, I mean, so stuck in there that they can't even sit down, that they have to stand up. Um, sorry, it just sounds hilarious. I wish I had a photo of this. Uh, but I wouldn't really worry about that because you do have a really safe coop and run, it sounds like. And so they don't really have to worry about predators during the day. They don't, they don't have to be on really high alert. And chickens do sleep a lot during the day. So I suspect that your chickens are probably sleeping more during the day to make up for it. And if they do just get really, really exhausted, they can always just move to another roosting bar. And I think eventually, I think that's what's going to happen. So they will work themselves out, but I do have one suggestion that you can do. I'm going to get back to that in just a minute. First, I want to address this thing you said about the pecking order and how your chickens never did establish a pecking order. So what I'm going to say here is really controversial. I'm probably the only person in the backyard chicken space who's saying this, but the pecking order is a load of crap. So if you're watching this and you're not quite sure what the pecking order is, it's just this idea that there's this rigid hierarchy um, in chicken flocks. So you have the hen who's at the very top of the pecking order and she gets whatever she wants. She gets to eat first, she gets to roost first, she gets to do whatever and she can attack other chickens if she wants to. She gets to peck all the other hens out of the way. And then there's one, the next chicken who's next down in the pecking order. And so she is submissive to the dominant hen above her, but then she's dominant over all the other hens below her and she gets to have her way with all of those hens. It just keeps going down, down, down until you have the one at the bottom who's submissive to everybody and everybody can be mean to her and she has no control in her life. So this isn't actually how chicken flocks work at all. And some of you might know I used to be a research scientist and I'm just a huge nerd. If you've read any of my blog posts, some of them have dozens and dozens of citations. Those are only the ones that I cited in the blog post. I always read way, way more. I am just such a nerd when it comes to science and these kinds of things. So when I first got chickens, I had 30 chicks and I went out and every day I sat with them with my pen and my notebook and I was gonna document this whole thing. I was so excited to see how this pecking order fell into place. And there wasn't a pecking order. It never fell into place. There were some chickens who were more aggressive than others. And um, there were some breeds that were definitely more aggressive than other breeds, but there was no rigid hierarchical structure at all. The pecking order is just another way that uh, people like to make chickens look like they're automatons like they do not have complex relationships and chickens are really really social creatures they have very rich relationships they have very complex relationships those relationships vary between birds among birds there's no just rigid structure that they all just fit into and when i noticed that my chickens did not actually have a pecking order i went to the books and i read literally hundreds of papers on the topic of chicken social relationships and on the pecking order and when you go 
back and actually look at how the pecking order theory developed. The guy who started it all, who coined the term, first of all, his study was really badly done. It would not pass as science in today's age. But even so, the study was done on chickens living in horrible conditions. So these chickens didn't have a lot of space. They were raised on bare ground. They had nothing to do and there was not enough food to go around. Not all of the chickens could get the food that they needed. And so this guy was then looking at these pecking relationships, these aggression relationships between hens who were competing over this food resource that they didn't have enough of. And that's where he came up with this pecking order. Even then it wasn't a rigid structure. And even then the pecking order only applied to food. So all these researchers would talk about how, all right, this top hen, this alpha hen, she's alpha when it comes to getting the feed. But when she goes into roost at night, all these other hens get to peck her out of the way if she's in the space that they want. So it wasn't like this all around structure that people think that it is today. And I actually think that the pecking order, the idea of it really does our chickens a disservice not just because it assumes that their relationships aren't complex and that they're just these automatons who fit into the structure and don't have rich social relationships. They have very rich social relationships. And yeah, I think we do them wrong by trying to make them into creatures who don't. But the worst part is that most of the time when people are referring to the pecking order, they're using it as an excuse for the poor management of their chickens. So if you're getting a lot of aggression in your flock, it's 99.9% .9 of the time because you have a management problem. You haven't given them enough space. You haven't given them enough to do. Maybe they don't have uh, clean enough water or enough feed, or maybe you've mixed breeds together that should never be mixed together. I have a course on how to choose chicken breeds and there's a whole uh, video on that on how you really need to be careful about what breeds you're mixing together, especially if you're keeping them in a confined space. So people love to use the pecking order when they when they get this aggression in their flocks and they just say, oh, it's just the pecking order. And it's, it's not, that's, that's not what it is. When chickens are aggressive, it's because they're upset, they're bored, or because you've introduced a limited resource that they have to compete over. And so back to roosting bars, that is why I would never recommend that you use staggered roosting bars. So I know a lot of people out there recommend that. And I know Russ, that you did a whole lot of research before you put your setup together. And so I'm sure you've come across those arguments. Uh, people say that the staggered roosting bars actually help the pecking order because then those top hens can get up high where they belong and look over everybody else, look down at everybody else. But the truth is when you put them staggered like that, now you've introduced that limited resource that chickens are going to want to fight over. So I always recommend that you keep them horizontal. And that's my suggestion for you, Russ, if you're worried about your hens. Uh, not getting enough sleep and whatever else, I really think they'll work it out on their own. And since you don't have an aggression problem, I probably wouldn't worry too much about it. But if you are worried, then if you have the space to put your staggered roosting bars all at the same level, that might just solve the problem instantly. And if you are new to chickens or new to coops and you're designing your coop, then design your coop with your roosting bars at the same level. If you right now have staggered roosting bars and your chickens are getting along great and everything's working fine, then just keep them that way. It's working for you. There's no reason to change them. If you're having some aggression on those roosting bars, uh, really consider putting them at the same level. That's it for today. Um, sorry about the long rant. I didn't mean to go on along about the pecking order that long. I really was just going to say a couple sentences, but it's out there now. So I uh, hope that was helpful to somebody. Hope that answered your question, Russ. Happy chickening.